Ciao, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today's recipe video is all on seafood. As the girl who's all things Mediterranean lifestyle and Mediterranean diet, of course, I share lots of seafood recipes, but I got the request for more in general, and so it came to my mind to create an entire recipe video kind of talking about seafood. Of course, it is so, so important on the Mediterranean diet, so much research has been done with the Mediterranean diet and how it is so beneficial for us and the benefits of it. But really a lot of it comes from, of course, the insane produce, but also lots of seafood. Seafood is so good for us, not to mention it can be quite sustainable. And when I say seafood, I mean fish as well as shellfish. Under shellfish, there's mollusks and crustaceans, which are the two big main categories. Of course, there is a lot that lives in the sea, but as far as what's edible and what you see mostly in your grocery stores, I'm trying to just keep it to that. All of the recipes I'm sharing today, they all overlap a lot, which I love. When I developed the first one in my head, I was like, okay, well, if I'm gonna tell you guys to buy all these different herbs for one recipe, I wanna show you how to use all of those herbs in other recipes, or if I'm gonna tell you to buy a can of anchovies, I wanna use it up as much as I can for you guys. I really want to be cautious of that. Three different types of seafood today, along with three different types of preparation. Before we start, I wanted to give a brief description of seafood. So you have your dark and oil-rich fishes. So you got anchovies, bluefin, tuna, herring, mackerel, salmon, and then sardines. Those are like the very also strong tasting fish. The second category would be a white fish, but that's lean, so not so rich in all of those oils, but um, very firm. That could be grouper, haddock, cod, halibut, sole, swordfish, which you will be seeing here today, and starch bass. The next category would be white, firm, and more oil rich, the albacore tuna, and Chilean sea bass. People love Chilean sea bass. Chilean sea bass is expensive because it's so oil rich that as a white fish, it always turns out very delicate and delicious because of that oil in it. It's a very satisfying texture of most of the fish. So you'll find that Chilean sea bass is one of the most expensive and therefore that's why swordfish tends to be on the cheaper side when it comes to buying fish because it's not as desirable in texture sometimes for some people. But I'm gonna show you a really delicious way to make swordfish today. And then we have the medium color ones. They are still oil rich. Yellowfin tuna, sockeye salmon, and mahi-mahi as well as coho salmon. We have your white, lean, and flaky fish. Black sea bass, uh, branzino. Branzino is like the Mediterranean fish. Flounder, red snapper, and rainbow trout. So I have some smoked trout and I'm gonna make it a very kind of traditional way, which is in a dip, but there are so many ways to eat smoked trout. Smoked fish in general is a fantastic option. The last category is shellfish. So you have your crustaceans, which is prawns, shrimp, uh, lobsters, crabs, and crayfish. And then you have your mollusk, which is your clams, mussels, oysters, scallops, octopus, and squid. I will be showing you a mollusk today, which is scallops. They are definitely more on the expensive side, I will admit that. And they can be interchanged if you wanted to do the recipe today for shrimp, which is a much more cheaper option. So the reason why I explain each category is because they all kind of get cooked a like, little bit differently than each other, but it's also so you know going in how to pick your favorite type of fish. So let's hop in to recipe number one. The oven is preheating right now, which is the very loud noise, to 400. So for the first recipe of baking the fish in the beautiful piece of parchment paper, we're going to prep the fish portion and what's going inside the packets. And I have an orange and a lemon here. I zested them <laughs> both in the sauce that is going on top, the olive and herb sauce. So now I have uh, the actual fruit themselves to cut up. Caracaras are a gorgeous orange. They're my favorite variety of orange. So I'm using a Cara Cara orange today. Highly recommend them during orange season, which I'm so sad is almost coming to an end. So I have the orange slices, and then I'm gonna do some lemon slices. It's also really important with seafood to pull it out about 30 minutes before you go to start preparing your dish because you want almost all your protein to be closer to room temperature when you go to cook it because that way it cooks more evenly. If you have a really cold piece of meat, it kind of doesn't cook as evenly. Next, I'm gonna crush a clove of garlic. Always use either the back of my hand or the knife. Peel it and I'm just gonna thinly, thinly slice it. It can be well dispersed and give off a ton of its 
delicious flavor. So I am making this for two. A lot of my recipes vary for how many people it serves, but this recipe in general is for two. So one orange, one lemon, one large garlic clove, thinly sliced, and we're just gonna divide all of these things amongst the two pieces of parchment. And then I got two fillets of fish to keep it easy. So if you're doing it for four, two oranges, two lemons, two garlic cloves, so on. It's kind of easy to double or triple. So next I have um, a tablespoon of butter. So I'm just gonna do some thin little dollops of butter here. I'm going to crush some saffron. Red pepper flakes are probably the most uh, common way to spice things up. Um, I use hot honey in the sauce, which you're about to see here in a minute, but I don't really like spicy. I can't do spicy. I can do a kick, but I can't do spicy, but I love the flavor of the saffron with the citrus. I think it pairs really well together. And then I have literally a fourth a cup maybe of wine left to douse the fish in. Picked up some swordfish yesterday. So I have been having this out, like I said, on the counter for a few minutes now, just to help bring it closer to room temp. Swordfish is a thicker style of fish. So now I have everything ready and we're just gonna put everything in this little parchment. wrap a swordfish and what you want to do is fold one side over fold the other side over I'm sorry for all the parchment noises and you want to pinch the edges as tight as possible and that was what will keep this parchment closed so kind of just I just pinch them together and then I roll it so let's try this again so you kind of just pinch at the top Fold in and then roll. Just, and it's okay if they're not like perfectly jam packed tight. The whole point is that we're kind of steaming them and all these insane aromatics. So a little bit of air to escape is ideal. So I have the two packets in a beautiful baking dish and I'm gonna pop them in at 400 for about 20 or so minutes. Okay, and now let's talk about the topping. It's loaded with citrus green olives, Testa Vetrano olives with a load of my absolute favorite herbs, a little bit of anchovy for the salty, delicious flavor, and some olive oil and citrus. When I tell you, you can put this on top of anything. It'd be so good on a sandwich, so good on toast, a little bit more olive oil and butter, and you got a delicious fresh pasta sauce like this. If you make nothing out of this recipe video, if you don't even make the fish in this recipe video, that's fine, and the seafood, that's fine. What I'm telling you to make is this, the green goddess dressing, and that yogurt dip, even without the anchovies or the smoked trout, which you'll see at the end here. Like, I don't get it, I'm just, I am the queen of sauces. Like, I just think they're so important to have in your repertoire of cooking skills, building a meal, so on and so forth. So I'm telling you, if you love olives and herbs, garlicky, oniony, citrusy, like <laughs> this, this jar is just so good. This is a great thing to whip up. It takes 10 minutes. It's literally just chop everything and put it in a big bowl. And it's perfect thing to do while you wait for the fish to cook. So other things that you could toss with this, um, so you could put broccolini on the side, you could put a fresh kind of couscous bulgur uh, grain on the side of this. You could do some baked potatoes and put it on the side of this, whether they're roasted or steamed kind of potatoes for ways to make this a complete meal. so good this is one of the most caroline recipes i feel like i've ever made swordfish is so meaty very very firm and meaty and dense 
for a fish and so this very soft and aromatic way of cooking it so good i don't know what to say i think it turned out perfect definitely want to like swirl the fish in the juices at the bottom because they're so good the oranges and the lemon have gotten so soft and so you can just kind of rub the fish in it so citrusy so heavenly i'm telling you this is oh my god this is so good the variations of what you can put on the bottom are endless the type of fish you can use so if you don't like swordfish you can use so many other types of fish i'm going to devour this piece of fish and then we're gonna move on to recipe number two so for recipe number two it is also incredibly incredibly simple once you have a sauce prepared and so that's my motto if you don't have one of these things ready to go your meal looks a little bit difficult intimidating whatever the word you want to use this is a green goddess dressing i love green goddess dressings they are incredible because they are so herbaceous it's like king herb dressing secret little ingredient in here is uh, anchovies so just like the first sauce the second one has anchovies as well because it adds that salty yumminess rarely ever use avocados i'm just not an avocado girl which seems like kind of like a sin because i feel like everyone has an obsession with avocados i threw in an avocado in here to help with the creaminess and the thickness of it you don't have to do that and then it doesn't add really any flavor just helps with the thickness of it as well as some kefir um, i've seen a lot of buttermilk dressings and buttermilk green goddess dressings but the kefir i was really excited to use that because it is so much more rich in probiotics and absolutely amazing for our gut health and kind of underrated it's a product i don't see very often and if you can even find like goat's milk kefir that's the best goat's milk is so much better on our digestive system than cows but anyways all is good as long as you're getting really really high quality good sources of dairy or high quality sources of everything because what you eat is your medicine green goddess dressing absolutely fabulous and beautiful and so creamy so luxurious great sauce for this kind of fish dish to kind of brighten up because we have that really fatty meaty iberico ham we have the scallops that don't have a bunch of flavors so this kind of really over the top creamy sauce with herbs will be great and then a simple topping i gotta have some crunch and because we're using iberico ham i wanted to use some marcona almonds because they're uh, native to España, Spain, and I think just some chopped up almonds on top. It can be that simple. If you're looking for something to complete a dish, to make it crunchy, to add a little something on top, almonds. It's as simple as that. So first things first, since I have this sauce already prepped, I'm gonna go ahead and take the saute pan on the stove over medium high heat. You definitely wanna preheat the pan. I have these scallops out at room temperature. I pat them as dry as I can. And we're gonna do just a simple salt and pepper. We're gonna put olive oil and butter in the pan. I like the duo. You can just use olive oil, you can just use butter, but I like a little bit of both. So toss this all around. Salt and pepper both sides down on the scallops. You can use prosciutto, easy, easy substitute. I just have this awesome, awesome ham from Spain. Mmm, dangerously good. So take the ham and kind of get a strip of it like this and then take the scallop wrap it around the scallop like that and then take a toothpick and where they overlap kind of pierce it through so that you don't lose the um wrappage material and then once they cook the um ham will adhere a little bit better is so, 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 so good. I have to taste everything as I go. So the first time I blended this up, I was like, okay, what is this gonna need? Some salt, some more water, some, I'm like, literally, it needed nothing. It was so good. And now I have this herbaceous, so bright, so zingy, delicious green goddess dressing, drenching the crispy now Iberico ham wrapped scallops. 
Mm. Scallops are cooked to perfection. As soon as you see them get caramelized, like three or so minutes on each side, they're so quick, so easy. And then the ham adds in the nice smokiness to it. And then the goddess dressing just picks everything up. And then I want a little bit crunch of the almonds. I, I really can't explain how good this is. You have to trust me. Like I'm just, I'm just scraping the sauce, it's so good. I'm doing a really bad job describing these flavors and these textures and how good it is because I'm just so immersed in just how good it is. And so easy, yet you feel like you're a million bucks. Do you know how much this would cost in a restaurant? Scallops wrapped in like prosciutto, bacon, Iberico ham, like four of them on a plate would cost you like $40 in a restaurant. Here I am eating a $40 meal <laughs> for like, I don't even know. Let me, I'm gonna tell you at least a third of that. At least a third is how much this costs to make if I don't get it on my dress because then I'm gonna have to pay for this dress to be dry cleaned. But incredible. I'm so full because I ate so much already, but we need to move on to the third and final recipe. For the third and final recipe, we are making a rainbow trout, smoked rainbow trout dip. So I have the components of the entire dip here in this beautiful bowl with everything but the trout itself. This without the trout, I just tasted it again before I pressed record. So good. If you wanna use this as a spread on sandwiches, on top of fish, like if you wanna make like a fish sandwich and use this as like an aioli or a spread, um, this as like a dip with just some crackers. If you wanna leave out the anchovies, you totally can, but it adds such a salty, delicious flavor. Like this dip on its own is incredible. You were using full fat, delicious Greek yogurt for a nice, beautiful tang, great probiotics, lots of protein, mascarpone for a rich, thick, creamy goodness. So it's just complements the very light fish that we're working with. Trout is a very light fish, so the fat is such a great complement to it. And the smokiness is paired so well with that high fat. Lots of herbs. One of the best ones that go with fish is tarragon. So lots of tarragon, herbs, huge, huge chunks of lemon. And like I said, that anchovy for some saltiness. And so now this dip is beautiful and ready to go. I'm gonna take the rainbow trout. I have eight ounces here and it's so good. So just open it up. So I'm just gonna steal a little bite. Mm, oh my gosh, it's so good. So you have the beautiful piece of trout here. I'm not gonna use the skin, so just peel off the skin from the back. You can eat the skin. It has incredible nutrients. I'm not a skin girl. So, in honor of the parent trap, let's enjoy some trout. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take it with my hands. You could use a fork, just flake it up. And it's a nice flaky fish, as I had mentioned in the beginning of this video. And I'm going to do big chunks. I like it chunky. And it should look like big, big chunks like that. So I'm gonna use all eight ounces of this trout today. I'm just going to stir the flaked trout in with the yogurt mixture. To go with it, I made these cute little crispy potatoes. Let's see if I can find a... And so I'm just gonna lay them down and cover them with a dollop of the delicious from Chilicious dip. Smoky, salty, so herby, lemony. It's not over the top fishy. I can't do like fishy, fishy. Like if it's too fishy, I get a little blue, you know? And this is just the right amount of such goodness. So, so, so good. You have to try this. The perfect little snack, little appetizer. Throw it in between a sandwich, on a flatbread. Sky's the limit. As all my recipes usually are, there's just so many variations, you know? These recipes all turned out phenomenal. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really hope you enjoyed. I really hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please let me know what you enjoyed most about this video, whether it was the seafood recipes, whether it was some cooking tips, Mediterranean diet tips. Of course, you know, it goes so much further than the Mediterranean diet. It's truly all about a lifestyle. I am so, so, so grateful for you. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your kind words and encouragement. Any feedback is always, always welcome here on my channel. Please let me know in the comments below whether there's a certain type of video, a certain type of recipe, a certain type of food, a certain type of lifestyle question that you've been having or are interested in. I'm always in the comments. 
I love, love, love getting to talk to you guys in the comments. It makes my day more than anything to have a conversation with you and hear from you in the comments. So thank you so, so much for watching. And I really, really hope you enjoyed. And until next time, I hope you create a very, very zestful day. Ciao.